But our story begins with heat as energy. One day, about 200 years ago in Munich, Germany, a large crowd gathered round a man called Count Rumford, who was busily boring out the barrel of a cannon. Now, this was a pretty common sight in those days, so why the crowd? Because Rumford had fitted a box round the tip of the drill, and the box was filled with water. And after the barrel had been turning on the drill for some time, the water became so hot that it began to boil. The crowd was astonished to see all this heat apparently coming from nowhere. And Rumford was pretty excited too, because he suddenly realized that the only thing that was producing the heat was the movement and the friction between the barrel and the drill. Whenever there is movement and friction between two objects, you get heat. Whether you're boring the barrel of a cannon, rubbing two pieces of wood together to make a fire, or simply rubbing your hands together to keep warm. This is because when two objects move against one another, the molecules in these objects go faster. And we know that it's the speed and the mass of molecules that determines quantity of hotness or heat. Fast molecules are hotter than slow molecules. And they can use their rapid movement to make things hot for any other molecules they come in contact with. In other words, fast molecules have the ability to do work on other molecules. Now we know that ability to do work is the definition of energy itself. So when molecules move fast, not only is there a lot of heat, but there is also a lot of energy being transferred from molecule to molecule. But since movement is a form of energy, and the movement of molecules and heat are really one and the same, it follows that heat itself is also a form of energy. Now when we looked at temperature, we saw that its unit of measurement is the degree Celsius. What is the unit of measurement of heat? Well, what is the unit of measurement of energy? The joule, of course. So logically enough, since heat is energy, the unit of measurement of heat is also the joule. We know that one joule is the amount of energy needed to exert a force of one newton through a distance of one meter. This means that if Count Rumford wants to raise this kettle of water, which has a mass of one kilogram, or a weight of 10 newtons through one meter, he'll have to expend 10 newton meters of energy or 10 joules of energy. But when we're dealing with heat as energy, instead of raising something through a distance, we raise its temperature through a certain number of degrees Celsius. In fact, scientists have worked out that it takes 4,200 joules of heat to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Let's see Count Rumford do just this with his kettle of water, which is now at 15 degrees. The Count is now moving the water with his egg beater. He's expending energy, and he's producing heat. Just enough heat to raise the temperature of the kilogram of water from 15 to 16 degrees, one degree Celsius. And it cost him exactly 4,200 joules of energy, or heat, to do it. 